Okay, so we'll now look at solving quadratic uh, equation by completing the square. Um, now, because I am uh, leading this here to uh, some sort of pre-calculus, where we'll be writing um, quadratic equations in either standard or general form, um, Probably the way I'm going to explain this will be a little bit different from what you have seen before. But I'll, tell, I'll, I'll link the two so you can actually understand. Or maybe I'll solve it the traditional way and then show you what the difference is as we move forward. Okay. So the first thing I like to do is um, recall what a quadratic equation is, right? So a quadratic equation is an equation, okay? quadratic equations are equations written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, as a reminder to solve quadratic equations should be equal to zero, okay? And a cannot be equal to zero. The coefficient a cannot be zero. Now, completing the square is one of those uh, lengthy methods of solving quadratic. So we have seen before where we have um, solved by factoring, we have looked by, uh, look at solved by quadratic formula. So most people stay away from completing the square because it, it's, a, it's not difficult, um, but they don't like, it's too many operations dividing by two, squaring, and so forth, okay? So there is also a series of steps that we will look at. So the series of steps will be, is usually the, the summary here. So the first thing we wanna do is write the equation in the form ax squared plus bx equals c. Now later on you will see that I will not do that, and that's what I wanted to point out here. Uh, in addition, if the leading coefficient is not one, we have to make it one. And I'll show you examples of that. Um, then we add the square of half of the coefficients of B on both sides, which is step three. And we'll see then from there, we just move on and we solve. So let's dive into an example here, okay? Let's go straight into an example and we'll revert back to the guidelines as we uh, solve the example. So example, solve by completing the square. And I'm make sure I say by completing the square because some of the examples we will look at um, can be factored and you can always use the quadratic formula. Remember, uh, the only two method, or two methods that guarantee, not the only two, two methods that guarantee to solve any quadratic is completing the square and quadratic formula. Factoring will not always work because if they're prime polynomials, it's not very easy to see what the factors are. So the first example I'm gonna look at is x squared uh, plus 4x uh, minus 12 is equal to 0. And clearly you can factor this um, example, but I'm asking you to solve by completing the square. Okay. So uh, just as a little note, there is no need to do this. Just as a little note, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 4, and c here is equal to minus 12, right? I just like to write that down because later on I'll, I'll talk about a b. So the first step we said, step one, is it has to be equal, c has to be equal, or it has to be equal to the c term, okay? That's the first step. So step one says here, write, in the form ax squared plus bx equals c, meaning move the c term 
okay to the right side of the equal sign so in our example we have x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0 what we're going to do we're going to add 12 to both sides so now we have x squared plus 4x is equal to 12 okay so that's what we have so step one has been completed okay now step two if you go back to step two if the leading coefficient is not one divide both sides by the coefficients so that the equation has leading coefficient of one so what is that saying is that if this number here is not one then we need to divide each term by whatever that coefficient is okay in our example a is one so we can skip step step two so a is equal to one we can skip step two okay so if we look at step three add the square of half the coefficient of the linear term to both sides and when this the, the, the linear term here is really what we're calling the b term okay that's the linear term so for step three what we're doing i'm going to write exactly what i have x squared plus 4x equals 12. now this here is my b and I'm, what I'm going to do, we always add, add half of that. So half of that just means divided by 2. Okay? That's what it says here. Add the square, we didn't get to that part yet, of half of the coefficient. So when we say add the square, what we really do mean is just square it. So once again, it's always going to be divided by 2 because that's what 1 half is, always divided by 2. Okay? And I do the same thing. Whatever we do on the left side, we have to do on the right side. Okay? Now 4 divided by 2, this can be simplified. Okay? So if we simplify that, okay, we have now x squared, x squared plus 4x plus 2 squared. Okay. And 2 squared we know is 4, but there's a reason why I'm not writing 4. Okay. Now, if we look at the next step, write the left side of the equation as the square of a binomial. And simplify the right side so what that is saying here look this we know this portion here is 4 okay this is clearly 4 okay now can you can you factor this okay so can you factor x squared plus 4x plus 4 and I'm sure you can, because if you factor this, you will get x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is really x plus 2 quantity squared. Okay? So you will see later on what we can do in my next example. I'm going to skip this and skip this. And the reason I'm saying you can skip this, look at what look at what happened and the reason why I didn't write. Notice the two terms that has the square. Okay? <clears throat> and those two terms are the x term and the two square terms. So look at what we have here. X and 2. Okay? So in my next example, I don't want to give you all of this in like one breath. So this is equal to now 12 plus 4. So we have x plus 2 quantity squared is equal to 12 plus 4 is 16. And then the final step, 
final step. Let's write that. Is to solve. So x squared, x plus 2 squared, quantity squared, is equal to 16. To get rid of the square, we saw that we have to take the square root of both sides. So x, x plus 2 squared, and we'll take the square root, okay, on both sides. So we talked about this in detail in one of our prior videos, and we already know what will happen. We know that we have to get uh, plus or minus and the square on that side, because whatever we do on both sides, right? We have to do it on both sides. So what happens here, this will cancel out with this, leaving you with just x plus two, and then plus or minus, we know 16 is a perfect square, so we have four. And then once again, you know, we have two equations. We have x plus two is equal to positive four, and we have x plus two is equal to negative four. Okay. If we solve by subtracting two on both sides, we have x is equal to two, and subtract two on both sides here, we have x is equal to minus six. So likewise, if you had solved this by factoring or quadratic formula, you'll get the same answer. Okay. So as you can see, steps are, you know, it's very long and then the half of the b and square it and so forth. Okay. So let's look at another example. So let's look at this example here. Solve by completing the square again. We have x squared plus 12x plus 27 equals zero. So remember uh, our first step that we're looking at is that it must be equal to whatever c is. So just as a little note, I said we like to write a here, b, and c. So a happens to be one, b happens to be 12, and c happens to be 27, all positive. So we move to c. Okay, so step one, move c to the right side. So this becomes x squared plus 12, x is now equal to minus 27. Step two, right, a must be one. In our scenario, in our example, a is one, so we don't have to worry about that. Right? A happens to be 1 here. It's already 1. We said if A is not 1, then we divide every single term by whatever the coefficient is. So this is done. Step 3, okay, step 3 is the complicated step. So I'm going to write what I have, x squared plus 12x equals a minus 27. Step three says, okay, take half of b, add it. We always add. So that means 12 divided by 2, and we must square it. Okay, always divided by 2 because it's always half of b. So this is b here, right? This is b. So half of that. So this can be simplified, 12 over 2, and I'm not going to square it because now I'm going to focus on what I wanted to point out to you. So this becomes x squared plus 12x, and we write plus 6 squared. And that is equal to minus 27 plus 6 squared. Oops. Let's stay consistency with our colors. Now, this is what I want to show you. Notice that which two terms has the squares, okay? So what I'm going to do, the shortcut to factoring this, the shortcut is we bring down the x, okay? We bring down the 6. And whatever this sign is, always the sign, that's the sign that comes down. And we now square the outside. 
Yeah. Now you will notice if you want to try this on the side to do some side work, right? If you want to do some side work, see what's happening. This is the same as x squared plus 12x plus 36, because 6 squared is 36, which is really x plus 6 times x plus 6. Okay? So you will get the correct answer regardless. You'll get x plus 6 times x plus 6 which is really x plus 6 squared. The reason I'm showing you this here, folks, is because when we're gonna have to deal with fractions and it's not very easy to see what the factors are. That's the only reason I'm showing you that. So what is this equal to? Let's simplify the right side. This becomes minus 7 plus 6 squared is equal to 6 times 6, which is 36, okay? That's a little scrap work. So we have x plus 6 quantity squared is equal to minus 27 plus 36, okay? Gives me positive 9. And now, uh, what do we, step 4? Are we at step 4? I think I've passed step 4. Yes, this was step four here. This is our step four. And then our step five, which is the final step, which we, I didn't put it in the list of step, is to solve. So to do this, we need to take the square root of both sides Okay, and when we take the square root of both sides, remember here we have a plus or a minus. So what happens is that this square will cancel out that square root, leaving us with x plus 6. And then we have plus or minus, the square root of 9 we know, that's 3. Okay, if we don't know it, we simplify it. So here is where I break my problem into two. We have x plus 6 is equal to positive 3, and x plus 6 is equal to negative 3. Solving for x on both sides. So x is equal to minus 3. And if we subtract 6 on both sides here, we have x is equal to minus 9. So my two solutions. Okay. Look at this example. Um, so as a little note, I always like to write down what a is. It is equal to zero, so I can say a is one, b is negative five, and c is equal to negative two. So we always start out by moving c to the right side. If we do that, we have x squared minus five, x is now equal to two. Now a, is one already, so we don't have to worry about dividing anything. So we skip step two. In step three, okay, we have x squared minus five x, and that is equal to two. In step three, we take half of b and we add it to both sides. So this becomes five over two, and we square it. five over two and we square it. And then in step four, we factor the left side, okay, which is right the left side of the square of a binomial and simplify. And this is what I you know, want you to focus on. This term here, this term here is a square, this term here is a square. And notice that we cannot simplify five over two now. So this will take some more work for you to write it out and factor it. So what I'm saying is that you can simplify this or factor this, bring this term down without the square, bring this term down without the square, 
and always the sign that separates A from B. So now it's a minus and we put the square on the outside. If you write this out the long way and factor it, you will get this answer, which is the same as 2x minus 5. Okay? And this is equal to 2 plus 25 over 4. Okay? 5 over 2 squared is equal to 5 over 2 times 5 over 2 which is equal to 25 over 4. So what do we have? We have x minus 5 half quantity squared is equal to 2 over 1 plus 25 over 4. And this you can combine to one fraction, which is 8 over 4 plus 25 over 4. Okay, this will stay. So we have x minus 5 halves quantity squared is equal to 33 over 4. And now we take the square root of both sides. Now is where we solve. Okay, so now we solve. So we take the square root of both sides. Don't forget when you take the square root, on the right side, we have plus or minus. So this will cancel out with a root. So we have x minus 5 halves is equal to plus or minus the root of 33 over 4, which really becomes x minus 5 half equals the positive root of 33 over 4 and x minus 5 half is equal to the negative root of 33 over 4. There is some simplification that can be done in here, okay? Because this here really means the root of 33 over the root of 4, okay? So if we want, we can write that. And the root of 4, the root of 4, okay, can be simplified. So we have x is equal to minus 5 half equal to the root, oops, I made a mistake here, x minus 5 half is equal to the root of 33 over 2. And x is minus 5 half is equal to negative the root of 33 over 2. And then we add 5 halves to both sides. So this gives me x is equal to 5 half plus the root of 33 over 2. And x, if we add 5 halves again on both sides, on this side we have x is equal to 5 half minus the root of 33 over 2. And you can actually simplify this on calculator, right? And you can write combine them and write everything over 2. So these are ways to write it. If you want to know exactly what it is, you can find the root of 33 in the calculator. I'm not, I want exact answers, so I'm leaving it in fractional form, okay? But if you wanted to, if you wanted to, just to give you an idea, we know in a decimal form, right? In decimals, 5 halves is the same as 2.5, okay? Plus the root of uh, 33, the root of 33, I'm using my calculator, is approximately, approximately 5.7446. And this here is an approximation divided by two. 
If I divide that by two, this will give me another approximation, okay, of two. So now we have 2.5 plus approximately 2.8723. And then if I add 2.5 to that, this will give me approximately 5.372. So this is sort of the decimal number of what I have above here, okay? I'm not concerned so much about decimals. You can do this here, right? So you can try this side, okay? And see what this will be. You can fill in the blank, okay? Basically, what I, I can tell you what the answer will be it will be 2.5 minus that approximation. So it'll be 2.5 minus, okay. And I'm using my calculator here. So this side happens to be approximately negative 0.37. Two, three. So these are the decimal approximation. I don't want decimal approximation for my class, okay? At least not at this point. Maybe if you're graphing it, you have to put those zeros. Yes. In my next example, um, you can see that A is not one here, right? So this one will be a little bit more challenging because we're gonna have a lot of fractions. And I wanted to show examples of these. So since it's already equal to zero, um, I can identify A here is seven, B is equal to minus five, and C is equal to two. So a couple of reasons why I like to do this. A is seven, I know I have some work. Notice that A is one in all of my prior examples, so I didn't have those. Uh, work that you know I would have really had to do in step two okay because the coefficient has if it's not one so in this example here a is not one so I have some work so let's go with step one step one says to hey move this to the next side so that's step one okay step one so we have seven x squared minus five x is now equal to negative two, okay? Step two, which we have been getting lucky, says that a must be equal to one. In my scenario, a is not one. So what I have to do, what we have to do is divide every single term by whatever that coefficient is. Okay, and if I do that, now, now A becomes one X squared minus five over seven X equals minus two over seven. So you see that we have, uh, you know, some fractions here, okay? We have fractions. And, you know, it becomes a little bit, you know, uh, intense for us when we have the fractions. Now, step three, okay. Step three. So right now we have x squared minus five over seven x equals minus two over seven. Now, step three says take half of B, and this is something else that I wanna point out to you. Now, because B here happens to be a fraction, okay? Dividing it by two is the same as if we multiply, dividing it by two, right? Is the same as if we multiply it by one half, okay? So on the, I, I can do that in the side, some scrap work. 
if we have 5 over 7 divided by 2, this is equal to 5 over 7 divided by 2 this way, which is 5 over 7 times 1 over 2, which is 5 over 14. Okay? So whenever you divide by 2, it's the same as multiplying by 1 half. So this becomes, okay, squared. We know we have to square it. 5 over 14. Now, if you're asking yourself, why didn't I bring the negative? I could, but when you square it, it will become a positive anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So even if you want to write negative there, it's fine. Okay. So I usually say take the absolute of it. Now, we got a factor. So step four, and this is where the shortcut becomes very, very useful. Notice my two terms that are squared, okay? This term is square, that term is square. So what I do in step four, I bring down the x, I bring down the 5 over 14, and remember always the sign that separates the a and the b, so it's a minus. Let me put the square down inside. That is equal to minus 2 over 7 plus a uh, square of 5 is 25. And I get my own handy dandy calculator here. 14 squared happens to be 196. Okay. So simplifying this, we have x minus 5 14 squared is equal to, let's make both of them uh, 196. And I know that because we have to find a common denominator. Now I know seven goes into 196, um, and that will be 28 times. So you basically have to find a common denominator, okay? So this will become minus 56. And this becomes, stays 25. Okay. We can still uh, combine the fractions on the right side. So we have x minus 5 14 squared is equal to if you combine this and this, since we have common denominator, this becomes negative 31 over 196. And now we can solve this, right? Step five is to solve. So we have x minus 5 14 squared. We'll take the square root of that or minus the square root of minus 31 over 196. So this will cancel out with this. And you should observe by now that you're going to have imaginary solutions because this is negative. Okay. So this is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 31 over 196, which is really, let's bring out the negative. So we have plus or minus i, the square root of, or since you may not remember, let's do it, the square root of negative one times the square root of 31 over 196. And this here is just i, okay? So x minus 5 over 14 is equal to plus or minus i times the square root of 31 over 196. And here we split it into two problems. So x minus 5 14 is equal to i times the root of 31 over 196 and 
x is equal to x minus 5 14 and that is equal to minus i times the root of 31 over 196. Now we finally add 5 14 on both sides. And that gives us x is equal to 5 14 plus i times the root of 31 over 196. Let's write that a little bit better. The root of 31 over 196. And same thing we'll do on this side. X is equal to 5 over 14 minus i the root of 31 over 196. And these are your two solution, your two imaginary solutions, that is, right? Because there's an I in there, it's imaginary. So, uh, an example to show you what happens when A is not one, and then sometimes you can end up with a lot of fractions, right? When a, a equals one, this is a must. Must, okay? So these are examples on solving by completing the square. Not a method that most people favor, but um, we'll have to learn it uh, when we do, or when we learn how to transcribe from standard form of a quadratic to general form or general form to standard form okay so i hope these uh, few examples um, will help you with your work okay and that's where we'll stop for now see you next time